In this DIY Wednesday, we're gonna be macrame, we're gonna be potting plants, making our own succulent terrariums, and then we're gonna go out in the garage, we're gonna cut some wood, drill some holes, and somehow put it to the ceiling. In my mind, it's gonna be amazing. In reality, it could look like or not turn out at all. Isn't this suspense killing you? This is killing me. Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today we are gonna do a DIY Wednesday. I was gonna say we are on the family room floor but we're not gonna be here that long. This is like an indoor outdoor DIY. What are we making today? Well, it's nothing you ever heard of because I just made it up in my head and I'm hoping that it's gonna work. So what are we doing? Well, I'll tell you. I kind of have an affinity for succulents. I live in the Central Valley and it is hot, hot in the summertime. You know, we as a household try to do our best as far as water conservation is concerned. So many years ago, we ripped out all the lawn in the front yard. We went to very drought tolerant landscaping. I think people call it zero scaping, but my front yard is definitely not zero scaping. Believe me, I still do water out there. I just ripped out all the lawn and anything that I do have planted is drought tolerant. Point of my story is since I have ripped out all the lawn in the front of the backyard, I've kind of had an affinity for succulents. You know, people sometimes think succulents, that's cactus. Those are prickly and they're ugly. No, they're actually, there's a lot of nice Nice ones out there that don't require a lot of water. I like succulents. I've also been kind of keen on this whole like terrarium situation. I know that people do terrariums with succulents. Not a big deal. Why do we need a DIY for that? We don't. You get a glass bowl, you put some dirt and some rocks in it, and then you put your succulents in it, and then you set it on the table, and bam, done. What I wanted to do, because I like the look of terrariums and I love the look of succulents, was make something, I think you can see it, right there. That is a gigantic fake tree. I actually think that my mom got it for me because it was expensive. And it's nice, I like it and it's been in that corner forever. But number one, it collects a lot of dust. Like every year I'm yanking it out, I'm taking it to the backyard, I'm taking a hose to it, letting it dry, then bringing it back in. I haven't done it this year because our friend Bob. <gasps> Bob, Jesus Christ. He's decided that that is a tree that Bob should climb in. He is ripping out like all of the leaves, everything. I'm surprised he's not in it right now. So I wanna get rid of that, but I do wanna fill up that corner. So what I thought, we are going to create, patent pending, a DIY terrarium chandelier. <laughs> what? That's crazy talk, Sherry. I know, I know it's crazy talk. So my idea is this. I'm going to, I don't know, cut a circle out of some plywood and that's gonna act as like the to the ceiling. And then from that, hang at various levels these various glass jars that I just so happened to purchase at the Dollar Tree. I just scoured the Dollar Trees and I got these glass bowls. I don't know, I got three of them, who knows? I got this with a lid, which we won't use the lid because a terrarium, the plants need air, plus you also need how to water them. So this lid, bye-bye. We're not using it. But I liked the shape of this container. I thought that would be very cute. So I got a couple of those. I got these, these are technically candle holders, but I figured we'd take that out and that's a cute shape, right? This, we'll take this out and that's cute. And then, ooh, this one must be fancy because it's wrapped. <laughs> no, it's not fancy at all. A, that's from the Dollar Tree. I think she was just being nice. Another one of these. So, three of these little guys, three bowls. It looks like I got three of everything except for these. I don't know why. How are we gonna hang them? Well, I watched a macrame video. <laughs> Yeah, this I did not get at the Dollar Tree. I got it at the Ace, not sponsored. So what I was thinking is the ones that actually have like a lip on them, I would wrap and then maybe like do like three strands up so it would hold like that. 
These lips make me a little nervous because this one definitely has like a good edge to it. This one, I don't really know if the edge will support like dirt in a plant. So basically the ones that don't have lips on them, I felt like we could make some macrame like pot hangers. I've never macrame before, but seriously, how hard could it be? It looks like a bunch of knots. So that's what I'm gonna do. And the bowl's the same thing. So ideally, like you would do this, there'd be like a macrame knot and the bowl would sit there. That's what I think. You know my thinking. We can do whatever we set our minds to. And I feel like macrame plant hanger pot situations aren't gonna be that hard. You need at least two strings per thing. So if you were gonna do a three, then that'd be six strings. If you were gonna do one that had four, then that would be eight strings. So you get your strings real, real long, tie them up so they're all like flowing out like this, and then you just decide like, oh, I'm gonna put a knot here, I'm gonna put a knot here, I'm gonna put a knot here. And then maybe you put another decorative knot. At the bottom, you just tie them all together in one thing and then your bowl sits right in it. Seems really easy to me. That's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna macrame and see how it goes. So in this DIY Wednesday, we're gonna be macrame. We're gonna be potting plants, making our own succulent terrariums. And then we're gonna go out in the garage, we're gonna cut some wood, drill some holes, and somehow put it to the ceiling. And then we're gonna have this amazing succulent chandelier. In my mind, it's gonna be amazing. In reality, it could look like shit or not turn out at all. Isn't this suspense killing you? This is killing me. All right, let's get started. Macrame. What I did is I got my handy dandy measuring tape and I measured from my ceiling to like how low I wanted the chandelier to be. The very, very, very lowest point, I want the bottom terrarium to be six feet from the ceiling to the bottom. Um, just so I know, because a knot takes up some room and depending on how many knots you make, and plus, you know, I want a little dangly, which I was just thinking, Bob's just gonna love the dangly. So before you know it, my attempt to keep Bob out of a tree, we're gonna have broken terrarium glass. So I might rethink that situation. But anyways, I know that I want my bowls to hang anywhere from, like I said, three feet and six feet. So I'm gonna cut a bunch of this landscaping twine for gardening, wrapping, crafts, etc. Oh, crafts, that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna cut a bunch of these at seven feet. I want an odd number of glass balls. They're not balls at all, Sherry, they're bowls and different sizes. I kind of like the bowl. I think that's pretty cool looking. How many do I have? Three, six, nine, 10, 11. I'm definitely not making 11 things. I was thinking anywhere between like seven, maybe nine, maybe five, we don't know. They say odd numbers are pleasing to the eye. Let's just start with one right now. So I'm gonna cut six lengths at seven feet long. Okay. So now I'm just gonna get my ball o twine and measure out another one. That's two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yay. I do know that you wanna keep these two strings friends and then the other two strings friends and the other two strings friends. And you wanna make your knots as even on your two friend strings as possible. Part of me thinks that if I just worked in twos and then put all my twos together that that would work. My first situation is is like where am I going to make my first knot? I don't want it one foot it's too close to the ceiling so two feet seems good but I want to add six inches for the mechanics. So I'm going to go two feet six inches is going to be my first first knot. I'm literally just going to tie a knot right here. The macrame people, they probably do fancy knots, but I just want to see if this is going to actually work. <gasps> Look at that. Knot one. Okay, that wasn't hard. Set number one. Boom. Done with that. Now let's get set number two. The macrame community is going to be like, you cannot macrame while sitting on your family room floor. And I'm going to say, you can do anything while sitting on your family room floor. I've proved it time and time again. So here's my second two friends, two feet, six inches. So this is going to be where our first knot is for this set. Yay. Look it. If that doesn't look like macrame, I don't know what does. See, this is easy. Gosh, we are so amazing. Third and final set. Put these two together. Measure two 
feet, six inches for our knot. There's my first part. Literally tie a knot. Boom. Yes! Okay, so all of those should be totally even. Over here would be my ceiling, and then right here is my first set of knots. That is great, Sherry. Great job. Thanks. So it would be like this, and then what I think to hold our bowl, we have to tie like these two together, these two together, and then these two together, and then join it at the bottom. I think that's what you do. So here we are. Now that I've laid my knots out evenly, and I know this guy's gotta go to this guy, this guy's gotta go to this guy, and then that guy's gotta go to that guy, I don't exactly know where to do it. This bowl is three inches. Do I do my knots at three inches? Let's do my knots at three inches, let's see. So you have to make sure that your first knots are very, very even. This guy is out of the picture for now because he is gonna join up with this last guy over here that is out of the picture for now. We're gonna join up middle this way, middle to this one. I'm gonna say three inches from that knot. So I'm gonna match up my knots, put my little thumb like I do, and then I'm gonna tie another knot. Boom, and then tie an actual knot. This rope makes a mess and I just swept my floors. Damn it, Jim. Boom, there's knot number one. This little guy is now partners with this guy. Now I need to join this guy with this guy. I wanna even up these knots here. I want to make sure these knots are gonna be even. So my thumb is gonna go about here and now I'm gonna tie a knot. Okay, good. These guys are together now. That's great. So now we're starting to make our circle. We gotta get our final guy tied with our first guy. This guy and this guy, those knots are even. I want them even with these knots here. So I'm gonna put my thumb about there and then tie these together. Great. Okay, so now if we hold this up, like this is this, oh shit, we macrame you guys. I mean, I don't know if we exactly macrame, but I feel like we did. Yeah, oh my gosh, okay. So see it, see it coming together? These now all get tied together down here. That knot is where your bowl sits. Let's just tie it, see what happens. Let's just do it. It's not like we can't untie it, it's a knot, and I won't tie it very tight right now. Okay, so pretend this is the ceiling. <laughs> oh my gosh, I might be amazed with myself right now. I think I tangled my, oh, there we go. This is gonna go in like this, okay, great. <gasps> Don't drop it. Don't get overly excited. Is this right? <gasps> Hell yeah, it's right. Were you guys even trying to question it? Oh my God, Magnum, check it out. Ah, it's totally not centered and it's probably probably will be easier once it's hanging. Look what we did. We macrameed our first situation. We did it and we did it on the floor. Ah. I'm pretty impressed. That's pretty good. First one's done and now they'll go much faster because now we know what we're doing. I'm liking it. I am really liking it. Yay. Okay, so I think you guys are going to die when you realize how amazing we are at macrame. We did that first one. I kind of was teaching myself how to do it as I went. Um, off camera, I was testing out my theories and then I just started going crazy and I, I'm a macrame genius. So look at the first one, how cute. Literally, one, two, three, four, five, six knots and then the one at the bottom, seven knots. So then I made this one for the bowl. <gasps> Look at it. Uh, that is number two. And on this one, I made like four knots, four knots, four knots, and then just one knot, one knot, one knot, and then a knot at the bottom. So that's number two that we made. And then number three turned out really cute and I showed it to Davis and he was like, this might be my favorite one. And this was actually the easiest one to make. This is the one where I just used the lip to tie the strings around. And I'm gonna do this one on camera so you guys can see how I, did, I came to this conclusion. And then this last one I worked on is equally as cute. 
Look at that. So what I did is I made it the same way that I made that first one, except for I took another little piece of rope and I pulled two together and I just tied a knot with another piece of rope. Tied a knot, tied a knot, which we'll go over that one too. But I just wanted to show you what I've been doing off camera to get the gist of it. And I say, it's a macrame success. So, because I was getting so carried away and making so many of them and cutting my string so long, I actually ran out of my first roll or bolt or whatever. I do have some scraps that I had cut, you know, tails off and stuff. So these are my scraps. So one roll of that ace ropey twine made four with pretty long strings. Like I think I didn't need to cut them that long. but. I do have this, it's a little bit thinner, and this stuff came from the Dollar Tree. It matches, it's just thinner. So we're gonna use this too, cause that's what I have and it was a dollar. So this one with the lip on it. Let's say I wanted them to hang two feet from the ceiling. I'd need to make this string four feet long. Where are my scissors? All right, that part is done. So these are my hanging from the ceiling pieces and I have three of them. Let's, let's clear some room. All right guys, you gotta move. Oh, you're so cute. So this is the one we're gonna make right now, this cutie pie. I can't get over it. I can't get, I, I honestly, I cannot get over how good these are turning out. I was a little skeptical, but we we're freaking macrameers. Now those are out of the way. Let's get started on this one. Okay, so this one with the lip does not require any knots at all. It's actually fairly easy. I took my three long hanger pieces and I just laid them like that. Then I took a piece of scrap and I put it under the hanger pieces. Then I wrapped it around the lip one time. I tied it leaving a nice tail on one side. Not like so huge of a tail, but a nice tail because when you're done wrapping, you wanna have something to tie it to. I'm gonna tie this knot here as snug as I can get it. So you see, I have my tail piece. Before I start wrapping, I'm gonna take my hanger pieces and I'm gonna evenly distribute them around my jar just by nudging them around. Hanger piece number one, all the way over to here. Hanger piece number two, splitting the difference in this circle. So I've got one hanger piece that would come up this way, one hanger piece here and one hanger piece here. To keep those out of my way, I thought of an ingenious thing. Leave the one that's sticking out of the bottom, leave that over there. Take the one that's sticking out of the top and shove it in the jar. So now when I'm wrapping around my lip, I don't have anything getting in my way. So I just wanna make sure when I'm wrapping that I'm wrapping around and leaving those hanger ones along the bottom. So I'm just wrapping and pulling tight. Now I've made it to where I can't wrap anymore. So I need to tie a knot. That is too short. I'm gonna extendo this piece of twine here by tying another piece of twine right to it. I'm gonna continue with this much longer piece and wrap. I've seen some people like when they wrap stuff use hot glue, but I'm not doing that. I'm just pulling it as tightly as I can. It's doing a fine job of holding itself in place. This is where I will find my starter and now I'm gonna tie this off. Boom. And so now I pull my other hanger parts out of the jar, bring these all up, and then just pick wherever you want. I'll pick about here and then tie a knot. Boom. Look it. So cute, right? And it's super secure. Look. So that one was really easy. So if you find a bunch of jars with lips on them, that's good because these ones are super duper easy and they look so cute. Next, I'm gonna do a macrame for this one. I am gonna use the knot tying technique. When you're doing the knot tying, you wanna have six strings all at the same length. And the first one I did, I cut it seven feet and that was like really, really, really long. So I'm gonna cut this one at six feet. I'm leaving myself a lot of leeway because I do wanna be able to play around with the different heights that they're hanging, just like a chandelier. There's my first one. And now I need five more. 
I found that macrame on the floor is fine by me. We're not designing some gigantic macrame wall art where we have a million, you know, ropes hanging down and we're tying like 80 million knots across like this. We're literally tying like three knots, busting into my new roll of twine. Number six. Okay, we want to pair them off. There's my first set of two. Here's my second set and my third set. Now that we have our pairs together, we just need to figure out where we want that first little knot. I don't know, let's say two and a half feet. Let's call it there. I have my little thumb and I'm just going to tie a knot. This part does take a little bit of dexterity. Trying to hold your spot so your knot doesn't move from where you want it to go and trying to tie a knot with one hand and like two fingers. On some of them that I did earlier, I did like a four knot, which was kind of cute. So instead of stopping at this point right here, I just did it two more times. Number four, boom. So see, it just makes like a cuter, longer knot series. Now that I've already measured this one, I'm just going to hold this one up to the next one that I wanna do. There's my knot in my first one. This is where my knots are gonna start here. Same thing, just tie knots. And I'm gonna do four. So that one's done. And now we just need our third one. Okay, so we have all of our little pairs tied in their first location. So now we need to get all of our little pairs to be one unit. So I'm going to focus on this piece and I'm going to focus on the first piece of my center pair. So I'm going to match up my little knots so I know I'm even. I've just been like, that looks about good. And that's where I want my knot to go. So I'm going to tie these two together. So now I need to get pair number two and pair number three tied together. Second string of pair number two, first string of pair number three. I want my knot to be right here so that it's even with this knot here. And I'm just gonna tie it up. Easy, easy. So there we have that. And now I need to take the first string of pair one and the last string of pair three and hook those two together. Match those guys up. Pull down tightly. So you can see that my second set of knots are lined up perfectly. I'm gonna take this first string and this last string, pull everything tight. That's where I want my knot. Boom, okay. So once all your pairs are hooked together, that's pretty much it. You just need to decide where you want your bottom knot to hold like the bowl in place. Picking this bowl here. So these are my top knots. Those are my joiner knots. Let's call them that, joiner knots. I want my joiner knots to be at the top edge of my bowl. So I wanna make my bottom knot, I'm gonna go right here. So we're gonna tie that. And I don't tie it super tight to begin with because that way you can adjust it a little more. Now, this is what I found with this super round bowl. It was a little like slippy dippy. It wasn't holding it enough with the strings being super together. So what I decided is that I was gonna spread these strings apart and at the middle of each string, I was going to tie them together like so. I just took an extra piece of twine, which I'm just gonna cut from the bottom of this thing because it is so damn long. And I'm going to take one side of this, take one side of this one, take this extra string and tie a knot. So now I wanna kind of rotate my jar, take this one and find this one and join those two together. Take another little piece of string and tie those together. Boom. Take our last two and tie these two together. Now, when I lift this puppy up, it's gonna be in there secure. See, that's cute. Let's cut those extra ones off. And now it's in there secure. It's totally stable. It doesn't slide around. And I know that there's a special way to do that in macrame without like doing what we just did, but our way was kind of easy. Voila. Now from here, I have been taking my ceiling string, the hanger strings, and I've just been picking a spot in the strings and tying a knot to keep them all together. No rhyme or reason to this, I've just been tying a knot. Yes! Three, four, five, six. Six down. I think I'll do. We have seven. And now it is time to take this show on the road. And by on the road, I mean out to the garage because in my mind, I have a round disc that has holes in it that these are all feeding up 
through. And then the round disc will be suspended from the ceiling so that they will all be coming from this round disc. So we gotta go to the garage and we gotta go find some scrap plywood and we gotta make a circle and we gotta drill it. So let's go to the garage. So I'm out in my garage. The neighborhood children, bless their hearts, are screaming like banshees in the background. But I do have my piece of scrap plywood that we're gonna use to make our circle. And it just so happens that I found a circle to make a template with. So I'm just gonna trace this. Seems like a good size circle to me. And voila, get my jigsaw. Bam, and I'm gonna cut this circle. You know the deal with the jigsaw, best tool ever. It lets you go like this, cut circles. You just push it and go. It's pretty easy. So let's push it and go. It just dawned on me. That wasn't a very smart spot for the circle. Why don't I just waste a shit ton of plywood? Let's put our circle in a different location so that I waste the least amount of plywood. Good thinking, Cherry. Okay, now that we have our circle cut, which is pretty great, you gotta love the jigsaw. We just need to smooth up the sides a little bit and maybe the top. So, have our palm sander out. Uh, I don't know what grit sandpaper I have on here. It seems pretty smooth. I'ma say it's 120 grit, cause that's what I think I pulled out of the cupboard. Let's sand it. Okay, now that we have our circle all sanded smooth, edges are lovely. I need to mark where I need to put my holes for my strings to come through. So I am going to, as you know, eyeball it. So I want one in the center. Yeah, I think that's good. That appears center to me. I mean, I guess we could kind of measure it. I mean, maybe we should measure where center is. Ooh, let's see if I was even close. <gasps> I was. Okay, now let's see where six and a half lies here. Oh my gosh, my eyeballs are pretty good. There was my big dot, I'm just a hair. It needs to be about right there. It is so hot outside right now, I am sweating like a crazy person. Okay, now I need to make six dots around, across my center, two inches in, let's say. We're just making this up. Eyeball, split the difference between here and here, and I'm just keeping my measuring tape across my center dot. Come two inches in here, and two inches in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yay! So now we just need to drill our holes. I want a drill bit that is big enough, but not too big. I need it big enough for my strings to fit through, even if I have to thread them through one at a time, but I want them in there kind of snug. I am gonna tie a knot in my strings at the top of the circle and at the bottom of the circle, but I don't want my knot to slip through that hole. So I feel like I don't know what size these are. I'm almost thinking that this might be too big. But then I look at this one and I was like, can I fit six strings through there? Probably not. All right, let's do this next size big. And I don't mind like if I go through this plywood a little bit. So I'm gonna start in the center, straight up and down, and drill. That was quick. Zip, zippity do. One, two, three. Four. That one right through my plywood. Five. Six. Yay. We'll just have to sand that just a little bit more and then we'll be ready to stain. I have got my trusty can of Minwax special walnut stain that I've had forever and an old towel. We're just gonna open this can up, slap some stain on the circle, let it dry for a few seconds, get out of this hot garage, because everywhere, sweat is everywhere. The good thing about stain is it does dry very fast. I'm just gonna slap some on, slap some on, dip it in, slap away, dip it in, slap away. Most people might wanna wear gloves when they stain, but I'm a professional. I don't need no stinking gloves. I don't let my stain like sit on and then wipe off. I kind of scrub it in. I just think that when you scrub it in, it brings out the wood grain and you get varying colors in the wood, which I like. Look at that. That's pretty. So we're gonna flip it. 
stain the other side, stain the edge, then we're done. Look how fast that was. And it doesn't take very much, so if you didn't have stain, I think they sell little baby cans of stain. You don't have to buy a giant thing of it. And unlike paint, I feel like stain lasts a lot longer. Like, once you've opened it, I'm just gonna hit the edge here real quick. We're gonna leave it out here for maybe like five minutes and then we're gonna bring it in and we're gonna start rigging this whole thing that we made up in our head. I really like that. Plywood, I think plywood gets a bad rap. Once plywood is stained, like it looks good. Like that is some nice wood grain texture. I've got stain in all my nooks and crannies. So we'll leave that here. Come back, grab it, go back in the house. Hopefully hang it, I don't know. I have brought everything inside because it is like 106 outside and I can't take it. So we are going to finish up the rest of this DIY on the family room floor. But just so you can kind of get where we're going, where my crazy mind is at right now, let me show you. Do you kind of get the gist as to what we're doing? You see it? It's like a chandelier. They won't all be clumped together like this because we made our little disc. So all we have to do is put our succulents in each one of these and then put our string through the disc and then we're gonna hang it over there. Okay, so that was very, very easy stringing these strings through my piece of wood. I know this isn't like the most ideal situation because this thing could be six feet tall and I'm sitting on the floor and you might not get to see it from, you know, all the way if I do this. But, see? <laughs> I have the two bowls attached right now. I wanna put the other ones in to get an idea of if I have to adjust my knots or anything like that. I know how I could do it. That's for that bowl. We'll just set it there very nicely and gently and see what happens. This may not work out. This might turn into a disaster area. There, like so. He'll sit very gently right there. Now let's put our bowl. Bob, we don't need you right now. And let's very gently pick this up and see what happens. Okay, we have lift off. Oh, mighty Ouija. Oh my God, it looks amazing. Holy shit, it looks so good. We just have to make some minor, minor adjustments to some heights. Oh my gosh, this is really cute. I know you can't see it in its full flavor right this second, but let's make some adjustments. Like, adjustments need to happen. Let's get to it. <sighs> okay, so it took a little bit of finagling and re-knot tying, but I got it to the perfect height to where all of the bowls are dangling, not hitting each other. The heights are amazing. I know you can't see it all right now, but just trust me, it's amazing. The only thing that we need to do is pot our succulents, just secure all of our knots. I just got one of these little cheese ball little hooks. The plan is, is that I am going to string from like here to here and here to here onto the hook, put it on the ceiling, donezo. So first, let's secure our top and bottom knots so nothing slips out on us while we have it hanging eight or ten feet up in the ceiling however high our ceilings are so i am going to tighten these knots at the top then i'm also going to flip over this piece of wood pull this one nice and tight here so that I can tie a knot on the bottom of the board as well. I want the board real tight in between my two knots. So that sucker's not going anywhere. This next guy, nice and snug at the top. Pull real tight, real tight. So there we go there. And then we're just going around and doing all of them, all seven, and making our knots nice and secure. And then we're going to pot our plants. Now that all of my knots are securely tied top and bottom, I can move on to potting my succulent terrariums. I got some succulents that Bob has been eating. Picked up some succulents at the Ace, but I also have some in the backyard that I was going to like maybe intermingle into, so we'll see. Oh, look, like seriously, Bob literally just ate off all those three. Thanks, Bob. We got some talls, we got some skinnies, maybe like 
That one will look cute. If they're sticking out of the top, I don't really care. Basically, just fit your succulents into your pots. It's not that difficult. For the terrarium, you just wanna make sure, because these are bowls that don't have any drainage, you wanna make sure that you have a layer of drainage, so like gravel, which I have here. All-purpose gravel. I could have bought a little bag like this of decorative gravel for $8, and I got this entire 50-pound bag of gravel for $4. Put a thin little layer in my bowl so that the water has somewhere to go. I also got black gold, Texas tea, cactus mix. It's for succulents and desert plants, along with some miracle Grow cactus, palm, and citrus potting mix. It's the fast draining formula. First, I'm gonna layer the rocks, then I'm gonna do a layer of the black gold, then I'm gonna put my succulent in, and then I'm gonna fill in with my potting soil. That's basically how I'm gonna do it. And the black gold has little gravels in it as well to help for drainage. So you can see it's kind of like um, a gravelly mix and not just a straight soil mix. That's that. Okay, so I basically went in my backyard and cultivated some succulents from some succulents I already had growing. I got myself a little bit of water as well to moisten the soil. You know. It's potting plants, it's not that difficult. We're gonna put some miracle grow on top of it so it will miraculously grow. Just dampen those up a little. They're succulents, they don't need much. And then you can see we have our rock layer, our cactus mix layer, and then our soil layer. That's cute. We're gonna leave that right there and we're gonna pot the remainder. So I have all of my succulents potted in their terrariums. Now, I know that by definition, what we are looking at here is not the classical Webster's Dictionary of a terrarium. I get it, but they're terrarium-esque. We're taking the word terrarium and we're making it our own right now in this succulent terrarium chandelier. I have a gigantic mess on my floor, but Look it! When they're all hanging, how cute is that going to be? I'm actually going to, it's pretty late right now, I'm gonna clean up my floor, maybe eat some dinner, and go to bed, and then tomorrow, I'll come home right after work, and then we'll hang this puppy, because that's literally all we have to do. I have to take this hook and put it up in the ceiling, up in the corner, put the bowls back in, and hang it, and move that fake tree out of here. Okay, so seriously, can we hurry up and get this DIY done already? It's like day four of this DIY, you're probably thinking. But yet you're still wearing the same shitty red t-shirt that you were wearing on day one. Yes, yes I am. That's how I roll. I'm not fooling you. This wasn't all done on the same day. I just wear the same shit day after day when I'm doing this DIY. So. We are on the last step. I keep saying that, but this really is the last step. We just need to make our little hanger, put our little hook in the ceiling, hang this puppy. I have all of my plants planted. I am going to make a hanger like this, hanger like this, and a hanger like this. I'm gonna use my twine, and I'm also going to use um, a key ring. This little key ring, my twine's going to go through it and then I'm going to hang this from my little hooky doodad. I am guesstimating I want this hanging from the ceiling no more than one foot. So I'm going to cut my strings at 24 inches, 12 on this side, 12 on this side. I'm gonna go 26 so that I have room to tie a knot because this is my thinner twine. I'm probably gonna double it up. Let's double it up. I'm going to take two of my pieces of twine and I'm actually gonna pull up this knot just a little bit so I can get the twine underneath of the knot and then tie my knot of twine underneath that knot. Pull real tight and I'm gonna just do one more for good measure. Before I tie it to its cross piece, I'm gonna take my key ring and thread it through my key ring. So do you see what we're going for here? this sort of a situation. So now I'm gonna come directly across, pull this knot up just a hair so I can get my string underneath. That is super duper nice and sturdy. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing two more times.
yay. And voila, it is all ready to be hung. Now we just gotta trim off our tops of our knots so it doesn't look like that, and then hang it. Okay, so now that I have everything looking just darling and secure, it is officially time to put the hook in the ceiling. I bought this swivel one for no particular reason. I think literally because it was the cheapest one available. You wanna make sure that you get a hook that does have a butterfly. So what's gonna happen if you've never used this before, you are gonna punch a hole in your ceiling and I literally use the actual butterfly to do it. You put this little screw in here like so. You have to punch a hole in your ceiling that will accommodate the circumference of this butterfly situation. You shove it up in your ceiling like that. And then when it passes like the drywall of the ceiling, these little butterflies pop open and then they don't come down. Then you take, oh, I, I lied to you so bad. Put your little hook dude on there. Then put this sucker in here. There's a little hole and you just screw that there. Close that on up, shove it up into your ceiling and then you screw, 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 screw until your ceiling, basically the drywall, is in between the butterfly and this white thing, and obviously the screw is up in there. And then stick your hook on and hang it, and that's it. So I'm just gonna go do it real quick. So it took me a little minute, but I finally got it hung, got all the furniture back in place, and now it is time to see the succulent terrarium, and I use the word terrarium very loosely, chandelier. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Mari Luigi, it's beautiful. I love it so much. So now this is the final succulent terrarium chandelier on This Is Real Life with Sherry. And just when you thought we were never gonna get it hung, I know, right? It's amazing! I'm literally kneeling on the back of my couch so that it can be in the background with me because I think it is so gorgeous. And again, terrarium, typically bigger bowl, things are on the inside, not really poking out, but we just made this our own. So I'm calling it terrarium. It's in glass, there's rocks, there's dirt. I say we're good. I say terrarium, you say terrarium, I don't know. Whatever it is, this succulent chandelier is amazing. And we thought of it just out of our head. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this before? I haven't. We macrame we sawed, we drilled, we gardened, and we hung. And it is amazing. We're fucking awesome. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell because if you do, you will be notified of all the DIY Wednesday videos I push out, which is every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.